When Trish is in the kitchen, we know we're cooking with chocolate. But today we're not cooking cake or a tart. What are we cooking, Trish? We are going to do some tempering of chocolate. Right. Um, just a really easy method of doing it at home. Mm -hmm. So for those who don't know, what is tempering chocolate? Okay, well, I'm just going to pop some of this chocolate in first. These are Cadbury melts. Mm -hmm. Is that da the dark? Mm -hmm. Yep, I've used the dark one. So I've got a whole packet here, which is 250 grams. Now, I guess the most important thing to talk about first is that we need to melt the chocolate carefully over simmering water. Um, don't allow the water to come in contact with the bowl underneath and make sure that you use clean, dry utensils. Mm -hmm. uh, it's best to use metal spoons rather than wooden spoons because wooden spoons contain moisture. Okay. All right, now the difference between real chocolate, which all of the Cadbury baking range is real chocolate, mm -hmm. whether it be milk dark or white, the difference between real chocolate and compound chocolate is that real chocolate contains cocoa butter. The beautiful thing about cocoa butter is it gives a luxurious feel to the chocolate. It keeps it smooth and shiny and really quite delicious mm -hmm. as well. But the um, the secret about cocoa butter is that it, for, it's, it sort of sits in the chocolate in suspension. When you buy chocolate from the supermarket, the chocolate is tempered, OK? Right. So okay. as soon as you melt the chocolate, you, in fact, lose the temper. Mm -hmm. OK? So what temper means is that um, to your chocolate is that it's shiny and it has a, a lovely snap to it when mm. you break it. So when you buy the chocolate and break it, it will have that snap. That snap. So you need to make sure that when you're going to do this at home, and we're just going to dip and make some little chocolates today yeah. but this process is important for you know when you're pouring it uh, the chocolate over something that needs to be cut and set let's say or if you're making truffles and you want to coat them and you want that coating to set uh, quite firm and hard so we can take that off now Okay, so what we need to do now, I've melted two-thirds of the chocolate there. There's plenty of heat in that bowl for us to melt the rest. Mm -hmm. What we're doing here is reintroducing about a third of the chocolate back into the bowl. Nice. And because that chocolate that we've added is tempered, it will start to reintroduce the temper to the chocolate. Mm -hmm. So this is actually called the, the seeding method, which mm. is kind of like the the cheats or easy way to temper chocolate at home. Um, we're going to make some really easy things here. We've mm -hmm. got some a really good old favourite seeing there near you, Justine. We might get going with Stra the chocolate old strawberries. That we're doing. Yeah, so you drop in the end. It will take a little time for the chocolate to firm. But when you're actually working with things like chocolate making, like we're doing here, you actually want the chocolate to stay liquid for a mm. period of time. Um, sometimes compound chocolate uh, starts to set almost straight away and you really can't work with it any longer. So by seeding it, it gives you the opportunity to have time to work with it. So how long is this going to take to set? Um, probably about 20 minutes or 20 so, minutes. I would think. Yeah. Sometimes a little longer. If the strawberries are really cold, they might set a little faster. But yeah. I think the main thing is, you know, I think people think that the automatic thing is to throw it straight into the refrigerator. Mm. I think you'll actually find you get better results if you let it sit at room temperature for a while and just let it do its thing. We've got a couple of just easy moulds to fill here. Mm. Um, I've got a little rosette one that you can buy at any sort of kitchenware store, mm. which are kind of fun. So you need to make sure it's perfectly clean and dry mm -hmm. um, before you start to add your chocolate. So fill right up to the edge. Mm -hmm. All right, well, let's take our time, Trish. Let's get these done. We'll wait for them to set, and I guess we can show the example of once they are set, mm -hmm. what they should look like. Sure. So Trish, the ones that we just made we're allowing just to set, mm -hmm. which takes a bit of time. That's right. But, uh, you know, it, it's important to be patient with it, isn't it? Absolutely. I mean, if you want them to be good, mm -hmm. yeah, no, there's no point in rushing it. Good things take time. Yeah. And there's one there just so to those little, Yeah, those little beauties we did a little earlier. And these little ones, obviously we've got the dark ones and the white ones. And we used a little bit of milk chocolate here using the same seeding method mm. and added some roasted uh, macadamias and almonds. So they're really nutty and delicious. Mm. And they're just in the little foil cake. Cases. And look at these. Mm. These ones I'm very proud of. Look at the <laughs> little, little spoons. spoons. Yeah. So I thought, you know, just for something a bit special, we'll just use them the little spoons as a decoration on a little cheesecake. Not just a decoration. Well. You didn't have to put that one there. Oh, you know that one's not going to sit there. I'll yeah. just use that for this. <laughs> I 
<laughs> just go dig her out, fair enough. There's so many different things you can do with tempering chocolate, isn't there? That's right, that's right. So you'll find a whole lot of information on um, cadburykitchen.com.au. I'm almost finished my spoon. <laughs> <laughs> There's plenty more where that came from. They're so good. Thanks, Trish. Pleasure.